Hi, last week we went through the abdominal region, so the four quadrants or the nine regions, and I mentioned a few bony landmarks, but I kind of skipped over them. So I thought, since this is my YouTube channel, I can do whatever I want, I'm going to uh, go through some bony anatomy, bony landmarks that you can palpate relevant to the abdomen to help you work out where you are and work out where other things are. Wow, look at this, the, <laughs> the shirt of a working man. I've been, uh, I've been teaching all day. Teaching wearing a lab coat in the lab with, uh, with cadavers and students. Uh, normally if I'm giving a lecture, I don't feel like I've given a good lecture. <laughs> there we go. I don't feel like I've given a good lecture if my shirt's still tucked in. All right, the first trick I think for most people is um, what defines the abdomen, where is the abdomen? Well, if we look at the skeleton, who was a crude, some pipe cleaners, don't know what that represented. Um, if we look at the skeleton, we can see the rib cage, we can see the pelvis, we can see the vertebral column, we can ignore the, the limbs hanging off it really for today's purposes, but where is the abdomen in all this? I mean, because it looks like we can see where the thorax is, can we? Can we see where the abdomen and the thorax is? Right, well, that's what we're going to be palpating. If I grab this model. Oh. Um, okay. Boink. So here are the ribs then, those same ribs that we could see on the skeleton. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Floating rib 11 here. Hmm. This looks, this looks very much like abdomen to me and yet it's up into the rib cage. All right, so if we take off the rib, so this is the sternum and we will talk about these bony landmarks because you can palpate these. And by the way, as I'm going through this, you should palpate these things on yourself or a, a willing uh, volunteer if you have one. Can you see what I've done there? So I've taken off the ribs, but in fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, so this is, you know, this is rib six here. Well, that, that's rib six. This is its costal cartilage. This is the sternum. We say that the first six ribs are the true ribs because they each have their own cartilage connecting them to the sternum. But look, at that level, that's where we've got the lung and the heart. And if I take off this stage, this side rather, we can see a bit better. We can see the diaphragm. And here's the liver. So clearly, the abdomen is also deep to part of the rib cage and the thorax takes up some space deep to the rib cage. Um, the trick here of course is that the diaphragm is this domed thing and as we breathe it pulls down and flattens and goes up and down and up and down. So in fact if we're just looking at the bony skeleton we can't really say where the thorax is and where the abdomen is because it's all moving around so much. So what we do is if we want to define where the abdomen is, well the abdomen um, its superior bounder, boundary is the diaphragm. And then this is all abdomen. Now if I, I need to take some of this out. So as we take out the abdominal contents, we see that the abdominal contents actually extend all the way down into the pelvis as well. So the pelvis is down here. This is the, the pubis bone here that we'll talk about. So the abdomen is the space defined by the diaphragm, the muscular walls laterally, posteriorly, anteriorly, the lumbar vertebrae. And the only thing that really separates the abdomen from the pelvis is the fact that the abdominal contents are in a peritoneum bag. There, there's a peritoneum lining, a thin serous connective tissue covering all of this. And that is draped upon the organs of the pelvis superiorly. And that separates the abdomen from the pelvis. So where is the abdomen? It's a little bit woolly, but we can do a reasonable job of defining it. Okay, so that's the abdomen, and we saw there's a lot in here. What are the bony landmarks that are useful to us then? I know we're talking about the thorax here, but here's the sternum. So this is the body of the sternum in the middle here, and the manubrium up here. And we have a dangly bit hanging down there, which is the, the ziphoid process, or the ziffy sternum. Um, it starts out as a cartilaginous extension of the sternum and then ossifies, becomes bone. Um, and I said that we can see 10 ribs connected by cartilages, costal cartilages to the sternum. And then we have two floating ribs on either side. This is an edge of a floating rib. This would be um, rib 11. 
So we have ribs one to 10 attached to the sternum. We can feel this, right? You can, this is a really obvious thing to palpate. This is the costal, the costal margin. And what we're palpating here from the xiphoid process in the midline, following the costal margin out laterally, and you kind of have to push the muscles away there, we're palpating this, aren't we? So we're palpating the cartilage margin here. And if you go all the way out to the edge, and keep it continuous, you find the 10th rib. So you find the costal margin and rib number 10. Rib 11 and little, rib 12 is a little diddy one. These are floating posteriorly and laterally. So ribs uh, seven to 12 get called the false, the false ribs because they, most of them share this, this single connection. So the costal margin is a really useful landmark and Look what we find here. So the xiphoid process is in the midline. The liver here is largely deep to the ribs on the right side, but pushes across to the left side of the body. So that's in the midline. Um, and then we have the stomach is still at the level of the ribs. So the stomach is partially deep to the ribs. And then inferior to that, we have the, uh, the muscular anterior abdominal wall covering all of this stuff. All right, so that's, that's kind of, that's the starting point, right? So on the skeleton, xiphoid process, costal margin here, leading to the 10th rib here. Very good, okay. Now from here, okay, we've got the, the lumbar vertebrae in here, five, four, three, two, one. Most of those are, those are forming the posterior abdominal wall and then we get to the thoracic vertebrae. Um, so we might be interested in the spinous processes I guess that's a landmark. You can, you can palpate those to some extent. But really, between the ribs, through the abdomen, and inferiorly, the next bony thing that we come across that we can, we can reliably and confidently palpate is the, is the pelvis. So the pelvis is made up of three bones. We've got the, the ilium, and these are the wings of the ilium laterally. We have the pubis bone centrally, and then we have the ischium which is the bit you're probably sat on right now watching this video. So ischium, ilium, and the pubis. So the bony bits we're gonna talk about get named because they're parts of those three bones. The three bones start as separate bones and then they fuse um, as we develop and become a single bone on either side and that forms the pelvis. And look, loads of, loads of lumpy bumpy bits. Why are you spinning around so much today? Oh, because you're not tightened up, there we go. So if we continue our studies in the midline, and this is if I process all the way up there now, but in the midline we would go through the umbilicus and then we find the, the pubis bone. And the superior edge of the pubis bone is something you can very much palpate. It's a good anatomical landmark. Now, can you see, well, in the midline we have the pubic symphysis, that's just the joint there, that's not really something you can palpate, it's just a bit of anatomy. But as you go laterally, do you see we kind of get a pointy bit, we get a pointy bit here, right? And that is the pubic tubercle. Uh, when we're looking at a bone and it's got a bit of a sticky outy bit, usually something attaches there. That's why the bone has formed that shape, because something attaches there. You can see how we have this, uh, this bit of the pubis, kind of this, uh, this long bit, this other superior bit. This is a ramus, ramus meaning branch, like a tree branch. This is the superior pubic ramus. And that is, so you can go from the superior edge of the pubis bone to the pubic tubercle, and there is a soft tissue there we'll talk about in a moment, which you can palpate. But in terms of the bony tissue, we have this pubic ramus here, and that, that's probably pushing your limit as to what you can palpate comfortably and easily. So that's the pubis in the midline. Now the other one is up here. This is, this is a great one. This is the ilium, and this is the, this is the iliac crest up here, the crest of the ilium. We talked last week about the, um, again, more tubercles. You can just about see we've got some lumpy bits here. So at the widest parts of the ilium, we have the uh, iliac tubercles. And we talked about that last week because if you draw a line between the two tubercles, you form a transtubercular or intertubercular line, which is one of the things we use for dividing up 
the abdomen into imaginary regions. So we have the tubercles, but the iliac crest runs anteriorly to this prominence here, anteriorly. And this is the anterior superior iliac spine. So this is, this is easier to do if you're not wearing a belt and trousers and what have you, but you can very much palpate the iliac crest on both sides and as you work anteriorly, it ends as a really prominent lumpy bony bit. This is a major landmark in medicine, the anterior superior iliac spine. I mentioned this last time, but I glossed over the naming, anterior superior iliac spine. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of extra words. Now, if it's anterior, there must be a posterior one. If it's superior, there must be an inferior one, and so on. So, if that's the anterior superior iliac spine, if you continue inferiorly, there's another sticky outy bit here, and that's the anterior inferior iliac spine. So if we um, have an anterior superior iliac spine and we go to the iliac crest and we follow the iliac crest around past the iliac tubercles and we keep going around all the way posteriorly, then we get to a posterior superior iliac spine. Lumpy sticky outy bit there. So again, there must be two of them. So if we continue again, there's another sticky outy bit, that must be the posterior inferior iliac spine. There are a lot of words in anatomy, some of it is logical. And if it's logical, you don't have to remember it as much as work it out each time you need that bit of information, which makes it a lot more reliable to your brain. So, iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine, whoop, posterior superior iliac spine. So again, you can palpate all of this stuff. So then, the bony landmarks that help us in the abdomen are limited to the ribs and the pelvis, pretty much, because that's all the bony stuff we've got. The rest of this wall is made up of soft tissues. But I said I was gonna tell you what ran between this tubercle and somewhere else. And you see, what we had to do was to add the anterior superior iliac spine. But because between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle runs the inguinal ligament. Um, you might think of it as where the connective tissue of the lower limb meets the connective tissue of the abdomen, something like that. But it's a, it's a really tough connective tissue running from bone to bone. And that, if you find those bony points, and you do a good job, you can palpate the, the inguinal ligament running between those two things. So the blood vessels to the lower limb, for example, and the nerve to the lower limb run deep to the inguinal ligament. But that, that's pretty much it. So the bony surface anatomy, the bony anatomy landmarks that are useful to someone that needs to be able to examine the abdomen are the xiphoid process of the body of the sternum, the costal margin formed by these cartilages and the 10th rib, and then the ilium, the iliac crest, the iliac tubercles maybe, but certainly the anterior superior iliac spine, and then the superior edge of the pubis bone. The other stuff is, is, is like extra, extra, extra stuff, extra knowledge, extra marks, extra usefulness if you can palpate it. But that's the crux of it. Okay, uh, that might have been useful to somebody somewhere. So it was worth doing. See you next week.